What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This time, it's another How to Fight, and we're joined by Sensei Seth as we talk about how to fight Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. We had we had to we had to do a, get a few episodes out of the way before we just shot for the moon, and that's why we've got this guy on. If you're new to the show, check out Whistlekick.com. Check out WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. We'll give you a bunch of stuff at the tail end. How to find Sensei Seth? All that. But instead of belaboring a big old intro, let's acknowledge the fact that this is a big deal and, and we've brought on who Andrew and I feel is the perfect guest to attack this. So Sensei, to, welcome to, back. To literally attack this. To literally <laughs> attack. We're attacking the problem of attacking. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I have like, obviously, like everybody else growing up, I was a big fan of Bruce Lee. But then as I grew up also, I was like, hmm, there's some things here that like a lot of people tend to love that I think could maybe use work. So this should be a fun one. I'm We're excited. a minute 10 in and he's already offended people. I'll guarantee it. I love it. You're starting <laughs> off hot. Oh, uh, it, it'll get worse. It'll get worse. It'll get that worse. Makes you feel oh, any fantastic. Better. That makes me excited. Uh, and of course, Andrew. Hi. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, you got a great last name there, Andrew. Uh, you know what? You are not wrong. <laughs> Do I have it's to change? Such a solid joke. Do like, I have to change my last name to Adams for purpose of this show? For this yeah, episode? Probably. For yeah, this episode, best. Jeremy Adams. Jeremy yeah. Adams? Yeah. yeah. Found, sound like a founding father. <laughs> it's the best part, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, folks watching or listening, if you're new to this format, here's what we do. We watch the movie, usually again for the 400th time or something. And we take notes, like where are the holes? What's going on? Where might we find some vulnerabilities in this character? Remember, Bruce Lee, the person, played the character Lee. And it gets blurry in some of these movies. I don't think there's a movie where it could be blurrier between the actor and the character, mm -hmm. but it's still a character. We are not saying as we go through this, necessarily, now, now Seth, you, you might want to make this claim. That's fine. I'm not going to. I don't think Andrew's. <laughs> we are not saying that any of us could beat Bruce Lee. Whistlekick is not liable for the things that are about to come out of Sensei Seth now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What we are saying is, given a situation where we were wedged into some alternate reality where Enter the Dragon is a real movie and we're in one of those yeah, it's like, know, it's like fights. How do we do it's it? It's like, like Space Jam, but fightier. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. The original, not the, not the new one. Yeah, of course. Not definitely, not definitely not the new one. Not the new one. Not the new one. Now, Seth, how many times have you seen Enter the Dragon? You said you grew up a Bruce Lee fan. So I grew up a Bruce Lee fan, but like in a way that I didn't watch a ton of martial arts movies growing up. Mm. Like my, my uh, big like database of martial art movie knowledge is almost solely predicated on three ninjas. Mm. So with that being said, like I got, I got in big trouble with people the other day because uh, uh, I was reviewing some martial arts footage and, and Samo Hung popped up. And I didn't even acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And people were very upset about that. But I would say my Enter the Dragon knowledge is probably better than like my average movie knowledge, especially specifically with the fight scenes. I love watching fight scenes. I don't love watching martial arts movies. I said it. I'm sorry. But I enjoy the, like the movement. Yeah. I don't necessarily enjoy the plot of the rest of the movies, to be mm -hmm. honest. Most of them are great. Yeah. Except best of the best. Except best of the best. <laughs> so, Jeremy, I know you're about to ask me next how how many times I've seen the movie. <laughs> so, if, if if you're, did you just mute him? <laughs> I did. I did. And that okay. You got okay. <laughs> Okay, for those who can't see this, he muted me. Oh I my did. gosh. I did. I threatened you last time. He did it again. It, it had to happen. So uh, <laughs> I have seen this movie more times than I can count. Growing up as a kid, I watched it a lot. 
um, when I mentioned to my wife that uh, I needed to rewatch it, she she was like, I would absolutely rewatch that movie with you. Uh, and so we rewatched it on Sunday. Uh, and I will say it was not as good of a movie as I remember it as a kid. It did not hold up as well as a movie, it, it, excluding the fight scenes. We'll talk about that later. But as a movie itself, it, it, it was not as good as I remember it. Yeah, no, I that's the tough part about these. I, I did the same thing um, maybe a couple years ago. It was like as I was starting to create a bit more and I was like, man, I should really get back into these movies. Like I should start watching a couple of these movies. And I sat down on like a, a random Saturday and watched as many of them as I could. And and this one in particular, I got maybe like halfway through. Now, granted, I probably just watched like three Bruce Lee movies before that. But I got like halfway through and I was like, boom, and I got to the fight scenes and then I watched fight scenes and I went, boom, yeah. and I got to the fight scenes, I went back to the fight scenes. Yeah, that it, it's it's a good movie, but maybe not after three consecutive mm. Bruce Lee movies. <laughs> it's it's so interesting because if if you if you extract the fight scenes and mm-hmm. you know we are essentially going to do that we're going to unpack yeah. these fight scenes we're going to go deep on them if you were to chop those out what are you left with you're left with you know some dialogue it's okay mm-hmm. you're left with some acting it's okay you do get a decent amount of bruce lee's philosophy you mm-hmm. know i i double checked to make sure my timeline was right his writings on JKD, Jeet Kune Do, really were from like mid to late 60s, 67 specifically as I dug around, and this mm-hmm. film 73. And there were quite a few lines in the movie that made me go, oh, okay, you know, this is in the books. This is in yeah. the books. Oh, this is in the books. And I think that part of the reason this movie has this mystical quality, it's most people's first Bruce Lee film. Yeah. It's to a lot of people consider it the gold standard of martial arts films. I think this is why. It's not necessarily mm. about the quality of the fight scenes. It's not. It's definitely not about quality of any of the rest of it. It's sure. because we get the philosophy of still the most influential martial artist of all time in the dialogue, you know, yeah. sprinkled throughout. And I think that's an important thing to acknowledge. Yeah, you get like a decent bit of like the mysticism of Bruce Lee. Great like forward. like all of the best parts of Bruce Lee are encapsulated in this movie. Mm. Like all of the nuggets, all the little bits of wisdom and like the stoicism that he has, but then the like ec- how eccentric he was in his fight scenes and everything like that, it all kind of comes out here. And sure. that's that's one of those things. Maybe I shouldn't have fast forwarded so much. I would have missed some I missed some of those nuggets. But <laughs> that's like that's like one of the things that like he is perfect for maybe not his dialogue but his one-liners like about knowledge thoughts you know whatever it is is killer for bruce lee yeah and i think it's what he's known for so and Mm -hmm. i would say that the one-liners not the comedic one-liners but his philosophy one-liners are probably more known from this movie than from anything else yeah you know more people have likely watched this movie than have read his books and so I can't think of those types of lines coming out from any of his other movies. Mm. Yeah. This, this movie specifically has like one line that, that got me terrorized in my trick shotting internet Instagram phase, because I used to do, I used to have like a, my uprising was I would do bottle kicks. Like I would do the tricks. Like I took it to the next level and was always trying to do cool stuff. Goodness gracious. 90,000 comments easily that all say, Bottles, bottles don't, don't hit back yeah not even boards they didn't even have the audacity they just said bottles which i guess is a, is a little clever in theory but after you know however many of them yeah. and they gotta read them too you, you have to know that other people say anyway the trolls don't yeah. read comments no trolls get really excited at their own comment they don't care what anybody else has to say Mm-mm. no yeah they, they know that everybody agrees with them <laughs> course because there's only (laughs) there's only one possible way to understand this other than your way which is completely wrong yeah obviously (laughs) is there anything else we need to say about the film itself before we switch gears here and unpack how we would actually fight this Mm. figurative let me let me remind everyone 
figurative character who also happens to be named Lee? Um, I, I think the like the the premise behind like layering bad guys is so cool and and mm-hmm. having like like levels you know what i mean like yeah. it's something that kind of pops up a lot in these movies but having like different levels of bad guys because as you're watching the movie you're like it's just gonna get worse like it's just gonna get harder like you're not expecting him to have an easy round next time you yeah. know you're not expecting the night next fight scene to be less cool True. but that I'm, I'm a fan of that <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, you know, it was interesting. The one thing I did enjoy, I mean, I enjoyed a lot of things watching it, but one of the things I enjoyed was to see some of the martial artists from that time frame. Jim mm-hmm. Kelly, John Saxton, Bob Wall, um, you know, they they all made appearances in this movie, some bigger than others. Um, that was pretty cool. I was watching it with a couple martial arts friends uh, also Sunday. And we all agreed we would rather fight Lee than Jim Kelly's character out of this movie. Fair. So. Yeah. Now, here's the other question that I couldn't determine. Is his first name Lee or is his not last name Lee? Because when he goes in the FBI ag- agent's office, they call him Mr. Lee. Hmm. It's like Cher. Yeah. You know, it's just okay. one name. It's, yeah. It's a, all right. Uh, what's, what's that? A mononym? Is that the term? Yep, like Prince. Prince. Yep. Madonna. Madonna. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway. I don't Seth. Know about Madonna. Seth. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How great would it be to be known just as Seth? It'd be pretty impressive, honestly, because like there's some there's some pretty funny Seths out there, you know? If if I could pull that off. Seth Myers. Seth Myers, Rogan. Um Green who seth green oh green yes i thought you said cream i was like huh that's a new one i hadn't heard of that one (laughs) (laughs) all right i feel like we're about to detour hard here so let's pull it back all right that's the second time we've gone into some uh anecdote about my name so it will not i probably will not be the last right time (laughs) as we start watching the movie we start seeing good things bad things in the way that he fights Seth what did you first notice that you could point to and see either this is an asset this is a liability as you construct your fight strategy as as I started watching the fight scenes I I kind of like I veered almost more towards what his opponents were doing so like Mm -hmm. a lot of the notes that I was taking was based off of what wasn't being done rather than what was being done Mm. You know, a, a lot of these scenes are super cool and they're intricate, but if you watch simply the people he's going against, like it feels kind of like, obviously it's choreographed, but like if you're looking at them as they were a real fight, mm-hmm. it feels like they're kind of like easy pickings. You know, like they mostly are coming in and then getting attacked. Like very rarely do you see like, like every now and then you'll get some cool counters and you'll get like a, like an art, like a uh, like a hand trapping sequence, but they're usually not super long, which I usually like. Um, however, most of the fights kind of are from range, and then they are finished by Bruce. So the first thing I noticed is that we got to get better range management. Mm. So I think that's one of the initial ways is is kind of like fainting, tons of faints. Nobody ever faints in this movie except for. Bruce Lee once or twice. Hmm. Interesting. I I would agree with that. I also noticed, especially in the first fight when he's at the temple, mm-hmm. he actually dropped his hands a lot. Mm. More than I would have expected him to do. Um, yeah. I mean, he obviously did it a lot when he would kick, yeah. but he did it a lot in general. He dropped his hands way more than I would have thought um, and has incredibly fast footwork yeah so his ability to move is going to be something you'd want to take into consideration yeah that's the tough part and and without talking about any scene specifically um what he's so good at is like the the reason that's tough is because he has the speed and 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 the the knowledge to kind of like see movement 
and then as movement starts kind of thwart it so you kind of have to try and use it against them a little bit like because you're not going to outspeed bruce lee especially me i'm not going to outspeed bruce lee you mean lee oh sorry lee lee i'm not going to outspeed lee any of them you know so what i'm thinking is i i gotta like kind of faint and really make the damage of whatever i'm doing important enough to lee to make him think twice because that's that's the thing with him is you have like there's no getting around him if he's flowing Mm. i noticed throughout just as you said seth you're watching his opponents what are the opponents doing one of the things that almost every opponent did was they would come in single attack hold Mm. they would just stop yeah yeah and that creates this situation where Lee it has tunnel vision. I'm mm-hmm. going to defend this attack. I'm going to counter. And then I'm going to make some wonderful facial expressions, possibly mm-hmm. throw some sound effects on top of it and hang out there. Show off how ripped I am. Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, to be fair, I'd probably do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that that creates a vulnerability in that he does not seem to be looking for mm. that next attack, that possible next attack. Yeah. And this is one of the places where, yeah, the we have to suspend some disbelief. Yes, mm-hmm. this is movie choreography, but if we're going to yeah. treat it as real, we all know as martial arts practitioners, you always assume there's another attack coming. You don't yeah. gloat. Yeah. And he breaks yeah. that rule throughout the film. So I think yeah. that's the first place that I would go. You talked about it as fainting. I would make sure that whether I'm, I'm fainting or I'm creating a scenario that brings me inside, maybe I take a shot because this is the first person, mm-hmm. the first character we've had where I actually outweigh them mm. on, on this show. Yeah. Um, is it going to hurt if I get hit? Sure. But if yeah. I can take a shot to close the distance, knowing mm-hmm. that he's going to pose, yeah. that gives me an opportunity. Make him uncomfortable a little bit. Give him something he's not used to. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because now the first thought that I have is that I'm just going to I'm gonna play dead. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take <laughs> that shot. And then I'm down, like right <clears throat> by his feet, right? He's starting to pose and hit him with like a dragon tail sweep or something. You know, something like an up kick, like make him think. And and it's funny that you say that. I got a chance to talk to some to uh to Lyoto Machidi the other day, and we were talking about his crane kick knockout, which is like Ca- super ca- movie ass. Casual name drop. Nice job. Yeah, no big deal. But it blew my mind. <laughs> and and, and because you said that, he uh, I'm I'm not sure if you remember the Randy Couture knockout, but when he does it, he hits him right on the chin and he said, I knew immediately. It was like hmm. Like I had, I had landed it in practice enough and I'd done this enough. I was like, so did you know, like, did you follow up? Did you know as soon, he was like, as soon as it landed, I knew. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Which like, if, if you are this character, if you are Lee and you've obviously done enough of these fights enough, I would imagine you would like start to know, you know, and then you can be like, oh, okay. Pff, yeah. I can pose now. Yeah. No. Well, but you you say that, Seth, but at the beginning of the movie, he chastises his student for never taking his eyes off of his opponent. But mm. when he fights Ohana in the movie, Bob mm. Wall's character, yep. he absolutely starts to walk away. Oh, and yeah. what does what does Ohana do? He gets up, grabs a couple of bottles, like yep. so he clearly is taking his eyes off of his opponent. So, yeah. you know, maybe yeah, that's a good so clearly point. he doesn't know when, when he does a knockout. Yeah, that's fair. That's a great point. Cause he does just kind of get up. He's like, okay, I'm cool now. That's, I didn't think about that. And, and there is, there's one other, there's one other problem I see with your strategy of playing dead. Mm-hmm. And that's his penchant for stomping on people. Oh, really enjoying these the big stomps. dramatic, ah, and then and, and it looks like there's a little bit of a twist at the yeah. bottom of the stomp we don't actually cr- see them a little yeah crunch. well see that's the thing though if if the camera doesn't see me did i actually get stomped on hmm. 
Well, and so that now we're going into like a whole different level of meta. Well, and, and also, <laughs> since Seth, you didn't you didn't force his sister to kill herself. So That's true. That's true. I think it's fair to assume that. I don't have that written on the board, though. By the way, so so okay. just so you know. <laughs> Um, Jeremy, what's interesting, you you mentioned, you know, I actually wrote down in my notes, don't attack and leave limbs extended, because you're right, mm. so many people would attack and punch, and then just yep. wait there. I mean, yep. it wasn't, they wasn't waiting long. I mean, the choreography was no. pretty good, yeah, but it was yeah. very obvious that, it, you know, no one was jabbing and coming in, they would just leave whatever limb was extended there, so that he could do his, his choreography. And, and of course, we could, we could talk about the time. You know mm -hmm. that this movie came out we could talk about movie technology you know all of these things are very relevant yeah but in the context that we have here as we construct this alternate reality we, we can put those aside the the last thing i'll say about this is so many f of his fights were the tradition you know what i would call i don't know how traditional it is but mm -hmm. coming up and holding a hand and then you come up and they touch hands. They hold the hand, it's yeah. like, why would you do? I would never do that. Like, I, I would never purposely get that close to striking range. Yeah. So I would just not do that because let's face it, Lee was very fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His hand speed was incredibly fast. There was no way in the heck that I'm just gonna hold my hand up here and wait for him to touch me. Forget it. Yeah, I almost feel like that's like the best bet though. And, and I say that with thinking, I'm going to get in close, I'm going to touch that hand, and then I'm just going to try and grab him. Mm. Me being who I am in this situation, I'm just going to boop and then try and kind of like maybe cheat a little bit because, you know, there's no cheating. There's no cheating. And just wrapping him up tight and then just figuring it out from there, hoping yeah. that I've got something that – some attribute that he doesn't that I can kind of like just – Yeah, the weight – reach well something you know and then and then going from there and then just squeezing <laughs> hold on for dear life yeah yep andrew um you... my my thought in terms are we getting into like how we would actually fight him now yeah yeah let's yeah. because let's let's face it the fight scenes from one to the next don't expose from from anything i saw a lot of difference there isn't you know one at the end of other than the fact that if you have a detachable hand, yeah, if you have, you know, Cuisinart style attachments that you can attack him with, suddenly mm -hmm. his ability to block and get out of the way is dramatically reduced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my first thought when I saw that one was maybe I would try something other than Wolverine Claws. That was my first thought. Maybe I would go for something a little bit longer. I think the premise is good. But maybe go with like a different Marvel hero next time. Interesting. Like go go straight for the gauntlet, you know? Why not? Yeah. Why not? For for me, um, you know, he he seemed well rounded, actually. Lee's character seemed more well rounded than most other characters that we have done these episodes on um, because he had a stand-up game and right off the bat, he had a takedown with, uh, with, with a, a ground submission. Yeah. Um, he also is, if you, if you actually watch the whole movie, one thing that, that I forgot to mention before we got into this part is he's superhuman. Like we discussed when we did Steven Seagal, his ability to grab onto the car and while holding on the top of the car, break a side window, mm. which takes superhuman power, right? Oh yeah. There is a scene in this movie where he jumps about 15 feet in the air from a standstill. Mm. Just jumps straight up and sits on a tree, which obviously they filmed it backwards and just played sure. it back, right? He he yeah. jumped out of the tree and they filmed you. Know. But yeah, yeah. if we're taking this movie as real life, that's something to consider. He's clearly superhuman. He also makes no sound. Everyone that walked in this movie had sound effects. Mm -hmm. But when Lee was at night going around being a ninja, he made zero sound. Everyone else made noise, but he didn't. That's a very interesting catch. I definitely did not notice that. That's crazy. Yeah. So in terms of how I would fight him, though, I would wish, because he's pretty well-rounded, mm -hmm. I wish I had a little more capoeira knowledge mm. than i did because i don't know how he would do against 
attacks that would be unexpected like you often get in capoeira that unconventional footwork yes what you mean yeah i don't think he would know what to do with that yeah especially like uh, as he's he's not moving back a ton like a lot of his stuff is staying still and kind of stopping or when somebody come in comes in hand trapping parrying stuff like that so that could be interesting because if you don't know where the angle is coming from, if it's not something you're used to, and you're more used to being planted, that could put you in a world of trouble. That's a cool one. I like that. I think one of my big things would have to be kind of sandbagging it early on, maybe taking some shots, making him feel like I'm not a threat, mm-hmm. and getting him to, to brag or to turn his back Ooh. or do any of these things where... You know, let's face it, this character, when he thinks he's got it, doesn't try that hard. Mm. He does what seems fun and flashy or dramatic. He puts on a show and that's totally fine. You know, I'll eat up a couple if I have to. And then hopefully find an opportunity because, yeah, it doesn't matter what we what we identify technique wise. If a guy can yeah. jump 15 feet into a tree and he is superhuman, you're you're probably not going to make it. So you're grasping at straws here. Yeah, you're going to have a hard time, 100%. Yep, agreed. Okay, so I'm thinking my fight strategy is, is tons of feints. Like I mentioned it earlier, a lot of his stuff is predicated on somebody kind of walking into stuff or when he's fighting it. Let's, let's start off with this. If if we're all fighting him at the same time, because that's something that happens in these movies, right? Three on one? Three on one. Okay, I'm going to oh. sacrifice you. That's fine. Push you <laughs> Just a big push, which actually <laughs> a push might help me. It changes up the timing. Actually, I want to change my plan. <laughs> we're going to throw one of each other. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to throw him straight into him. It's going to be different in the timing. If he's going to meet us with a sidekick, he might not be able to get that kick up high enough or fast enough, but no, uh, more so, like I mentioned, I was looking at the people who were fighting him more so than I was looking at him. Like I was trying to think of the faults that the people had, his opponents had. So one of the main faults that you see in like pretty much any movie, like the concept of one person attacking at a time. I, I, if, if I am in a group full of people, I'm going to look at my buddy and I'm going to go, this this is gonna this is gonna suck let's let's just all do this at the same time uh and instead of i watch you and then i watch him get hurt and then i'm like well my turn to get hurt you know i'm, I'm gonna point. i'm gonna take a little bit of opportunity if i've got my buddies around all of us fight them at the same time um however if that's not the case if it's just me and him in a sand pit i'm thinking tons of feints i am going to try and get off the center line i'm a decent bit bigger than him at least in this movie i would assume he's the same size as bruce lee i'm going to go with like a big old sweeping tie roundhouse kick actually he might jump over it that's tough depends on when you do it depends on if he sees it it depends on if he sees it it depends if, if i was playing dead beforehand but i'm i'm thinking like i'm gonna try and cause a ton of damage because usually he'll like block one or two you know usually at the at the beginning of the fights he tries to demoralize people Mm -hmm. like he'll block something he'll be like "Ah, ah," and then and then you'll throw something else and maybe he'll block that and he'll parry it and he'll pop you in the head with a back fist i'm gonna throw something no matter what happens it's gonna hurt like even if it gets blocked on the arm like i'm trying to break an arm Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna throw the hardest roundhouse kick i can and then from there, I'm going to faint a ton of stuff. Like, I want them to know what the power is like. And then I'm going to faint stuff. I'm going to faint. And hopefully, I can start to, like, catch, like, little, little openings, little tendencies. And then from there, kind of try and pick apart from range. Because I, I am a bit longer. I don't know if I'm faster. Probably not. I can't jump into a tree. I don't have that kind of fast switch muscle stuff. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking range and faints and uh intimidation mm, makes sense mm. which yeah, has I, go ahead Seth. i was gonna say now that I, now that it comes out of my mouth 
I don't think I've I don't think he's intimidated the whole time. But anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, those are great ideas. I do like that. The, I like the capoeira idea. I don't know that I'm good enough at capoeira to be mm. able to really effectively use it. But is 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 movie Andrew though? Oh, good point. We've never discussed that. Yes, yep. movie Andrew is definitely good enough at capoeira. Perfect, capoeira sure. is. <laughs> um, the sandbagging idea is great. Mm. I because I think most of us, you know, we are all bigger than him. Um, you know, he, he was only about five, eight, um, hmm. you know, so we all have a, we, we all have a little bit on him in that regard. Weight yeah. wise, I definitely, um, I got you all, I think on that one. So like, I, I can eat a few shots. Like, yeah, right. I, I think so. Sandbag is a great idea. I'm a fan of that. He also used the spin kick a lot. And so I would be on the lookout for that and moving to the you know to what would be his outside so i can try and get us back i think that's what i'm that's what i'm ultimately ultimately looking for yeah no that's that's fair um a, a lot of his kicks are are super impressive in this movie like like it it's hard to tell he, he does a good job of obviously they're telegraphed to an extent mm. for the movie's sake but it, his his technique is great for almost all of them which is one of the reasons that like so many of these fights end at a long range where the person's coming in because he's like, you know, it allows him for his kicks to shine. His kicks are like one of the best parts of these movies. Absolutely. Um, so with that and the sandbagging kind of allows you to draw him in. So you draw him in out of that kick range He's got to rely just on his hand trapping. You know, he's actually, his, his grap, geez, Louise, his grappling's okay in this movie, right? Makes it tough. But I think that one of the ways that you're going to beat him is going to be kind of making it like a, like a fight, like a fight fight, you know? Um, but, at, you know, the, the scenes at the end, you know, we got, we got our mirror stuff going on. I think s- some of the psychological warfare is going to be what has to bring him down. <clears throat> And that was the last piece that I was going to bring up was if he has a struggle, if there's something Mm -hmm. he genuinely struggles with, it's adapting to environmental changes. You know, he handled the Mm -hmm. snake pretty well, but that mirror wall flipping around. Yeah. Set him back. He's like, I don't know what to do. Of course, you know what to do. The wall rotated. You go through the rotating wall. Maybe you're not sure which side to go in, but the path forward's pretty clear. And he's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And, you know, same thing when he's on the other side of the glass cabinet with the spear going through it. He just, he, when he was in a conventional fight setting, you know, in, in mm-hmm. that circle surrounded by people, he was fine. Yeah. But once that changed, you know, you brought up the, the hypothetical of a sand pit. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'd be grabbing sand and throwing it at him, not just mm. because I would do that anyway. But because yeah. I would expect he would have a harder than average time dealing with that based mm-hmm. on his presentation in this film. Good point. Yeah. So also, I'm, I'm playing dirty. I'm working the environment. I'm sandbagging. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't know. I'm probably biting his nose or something. Yeah. So what do we assume that the, and maybe I don't have enough context here. Do we assume that the mirror room was built to fight him in? We don't know. Or, or was it just like a room? Like, did he just have that? Like, don't did you he have, have one of those? Did he have like nieces and nephews? I've got, that, I've like... got a mirror room over there. It's right behind us. Oh, okay. Well, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't see it because of the. Well, right. Because um, if, if we had it out, I mean, you wouldn't. It, it would mess right. up the whole camera thing. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But if you have a room that's designated to fight Lee, which like, I could imagine that maybe this is, I don't really see any other point for it. But if you have that room, set more traps. If you have the time mm. and you know, and you just watched him fight everyone, you got to set more traps. Yep. And also pull the spear out of the wall. What are you doing? Yeah. Pull the spear out of the wall. <laughs> so in most of these other um, how to fights that we've done, my wife has always chimed in on what she would do. Mm. So uh, my wife knows exactly how to defeat Lee from oh, this perfect. movie. 
um, she would just be listening for the sound effects because they always happen just before the strike actually happens. <laughs> you just blindfold yourself. Yep, you just Dodge listen for the sound effect, and then Dodge you know it's coming. Style. Exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's that's how my that's how my wife said she would defeat Lee. It's a great point if you think about it. Although he doesn't make footsteps is the only problem. So you. But really... when he attacks, he does make sound effects. Right. That'd so, be the tough. Yeah. So if that if that's the plan, if we have to train ourselves for that, mm-hmm. I'm digging out my old Nintendo and I'm playing a lot of Punch Out. Oh, because good. all of those characters had some kind of tell. You trigger know? some trigger. King yep. King Hippo opens his mouth, and you got to pop him in the in the face, right? Mm-hmm. Like you got something in there with just about all of them, and if you can get really good at that, you can you can fight late. Yeah, I like to think that we are all a little bit more equipped because of this experience. You know, mm. like if the if the time ever came, we've watched enough of it that now we know a little bit. That's right. Yeah. If some alternate reality puller snatches us out of this call right now, you know, we have a little bit more of these cues. Or if somebody takes, you know, like some lock of Bruce Lee's hair mm. and they build an army of Lee's. Probably, probably more. That's probably more probable. <laughs> that, that, that would be difficult. Yeah. That would, that would be a challenge. Just an army of Lee's running around and, yeah. Then, then you just find the 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 uh, the laboratory where they keep like the the main connector that has you know how there's always that one power source that that makes the all of them think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you just find that thing. Or like, or you ask them, so which one of you is the best fighter, and they'll turn on each other. Ooh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. You could just kind of like counter philosophy them a little bit. Oh, oh, where you so could... if, if we're going that route, I bet you can't beat up this wall. <laughs> hey, you know, that wall is full of boards. Well, no, maybe he, he would he would probably respond with that. He'd probably like, well, no, walls don't hit back. Yeah. But well, I think what... we've, got a pr- we've got a pretty good plan, though, I think, if we have to defeat Lee. Yeah, no, I think I think overall I could definitely do it. Okay, I think definitely. overall you could especially definitely after do this, it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so the thing is, you know, you said you you said you were going to go hard at this. I did say I was I'm not. Go I'm hard. not hearing hard. I'm hearing tentative. What ends up happening as as you break these things down and you start to think with logic, it tends to fall apart. However. I do think that the three of us, I think if it was the three of us, we handle it no problem. Yeah. If we are hired as goons to take out Lee, easy pickings. You know, we, it's simple. You don't come in with a weapon because he's just going to take it and he's going to hit you with it. Mm-hmm. You all attack at the same time. You don't, like, if somebody grabs from behind, somebody else is attacking in the front. Oh, you it's, mean we don't wait? No, we don't no stand waiting. there and wait and see what happens. Specifically, no, at the same time. we might we might even have like a word, a word to like attack. We'll be like, Ca-ca! and then everybody goes or something, you know. But broccoli, broccoli, yeah, that kind of sounds like Bruce Lee if you think about it. Ooh. And he'd be like, "Did you say my name?" He'd be like, "No." He'd be all confused. Yes, exactly. Yep, and yeah, no, I think that. uh let me let me let me give it one more go and think if it's plain old me fighting movie lee hmm yeah i think i take it i don't think he moves enough i think there's too much like and which is crazy to say that he doesn't move enough specifically in this movie i think that the movement is one of the things that he's most revered for however i don't think it's that good comparing to like how we move now and how we've sure. developed footwork and since then, yeah yeah since then keeping good balance um being able to get in and off balance i think that my thai training is going to help a lot i think that on the outside my karate is going to be just enough to keep him either at bay or like parry his stuff on the outside i'm not going to run into anything i'm not going to jump up in the air with wolverine claws as soon as he jumps like, why do they always jump at the same time? But yeah, I think I take them. 
Okay. I think I'd take him. I would watch that fight. I would enjoy that. I would pay for that fight. See, that, I'm going to have to, like, now I'm going to have to video edit me <laughs> in these things. Like, I'll green screen and rotoscope or something. We'll figure that Go out. Go for it. Go for it. I mean, I don't think there's, you know, Jake Paul money in there. No. But I'd pay for it, too. I And, and the good part about that is that if it's me I, fighting him, you know, I don't think there's any repercussions to that. I don't see how that could possibly go wrong. No, not at all. No way. No one. No one would care. No, no, no. Probably not. If anything, they'd probably be happy about it. I, yeah, I think so. Go, go for that. Yeah. Let's see how it works. <laughs> out. I, I, I look forward. I'm going to start preparing popcorn now. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Awesome, gentlemen. We got anything else to add? I think we hit this one pretty well. No, I don't think so. I mean, no, I mean, you usually at this point we we let. You know, if if the actor wants to come on and rebut, we would give that, but that's not an option in this case. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so don't it, don't worry, the internet will rebut for him. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If there's anything that the internet is known for, it's it's for defending Lee. That's true. Yeah. Seth, where can people find you? Um, just type in Sensei Seth anywhere, wherever that takes you. I'll be happy to find you there. If you you could YouTube is big. If you want to see other like a Bruce Lee breakdown of what I think of him as a fighter, you can find me there. So if people want to go deeper and, and, and see why you think you're so much better in every way than Bruce <laughs> Lee, they can go to YouTube and type yes. in Sensei Seth hates Bruce Lee. Yeah. And there's gonna be 74 videos that they can watch. And 12,000 yeah. comments. 12 yeah 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 no if At if least. they want if they are feeling a little spicy in either direction if they're like hmm, i hate this guy i want to see what he has to say and i want to mm-hmm. hate him more that's fine <laughs> i understand or if you think the opposite and you're like yeah i've always kind of had like a sneaking suspicion that maybe he doesn't fight you could go there right on well, right thanks thanks for coming back thanks for coming on the show this was fun we knew it was gonna Absolutely. be fun and of course it was fun Oh yeah. Maybe we'll do it again. Who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. Maybe there's need for a part two, or maybe say, we all just you know have our houses burned out. Does well, yeah, it's possible. Does Bruce Lee have other movies where he fights? Could we? Do, is there a part two that we can make? <laughs> Whether you mean that <laughs> sarcastically or genuinely. <laughs> genuinely oh so many layers in this yeah it's yeah. the funniest thing i've heard in a long time <laughs> yeah that was good either way either way either way andrew thank you thanks for coming awesome. back on yeah all right viewers listeners if you like what we do subscribe notifications leave us reviews patreon please make sure you check out sensei seth and all the cool stuff he's got going on and yeah patreon.com slash whistle kick and if you've got a suggestion for the next how to fight especially who we should bring on to do it let us know you can email me jeremy at whistlekick.com can i make a quick suggestion please and then, and then you can end it uh three ninjas how you'd fight the three ninjas all three of them now if you limited it to one Mm-mm. there's three. a they're, really they're a fun deal. direction we could take it yes that's fair yeah but if we fought all three if you fought all three as as youth Math, you don't have to you don't have to include the grandpa yeah definitely as youth 100 percent. okay okay we gotta work on a guest then all right yep. i wonder who we could bring on all uh, right i don't know anybody <laughs> thank you everyone until next time train hard smile and have a great day